This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman. The partial government shutdown, now the longest in U.S. history, has dragged into its 24th day with still no apparent end in sight, as 800,000 federal workers remain furloughed or working without pay, with some unable to make rent or pay medical bills. We end today's show looking at how the Trump administration's restarted a division of the Internal Revenue Service to help the corporate lenders, the mortgage industry. Uh, the Washington Post reports an appeal from the mortgage industry has resulted in hundreds of paid IRS staffers returning to the agency to carry out income verifications for the mortgage industry. This process earns the $1.3 trillion mortgage banking industry millions of dollars in fees. According to The Washington Post, the IRS workers were called back to work just one day after a trade association representing credit reporting companies and high-level officials in the mortgage industry lobbied top advisors to Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin, uh, Robert um, uh, Brooksmith, uh, chief executive of the Mortgage Bankers Association, wrote to Mnuchin's senior advisor Craig Phillips, could you make these guys essential? Unlike the 420,000 workers forced to pay work without pay, the 400 IRS workers called back to work are being paid using industry user fees. Marvin Friedlander, a former senior IRS official, told The Washington Post, it seems crazy to me that a powerful banker lobby gets to bring their people back to do their work. How about the normal slob who can't even pay his rent? He asked. For more, we're joined by Paul Keel, reporter for ProPublica, uh, one of the contributors to the remarkable series Gutting the IRS, a multi-year campaign to slash the IRS budget, has left it understaffed and on the defensive. Uh, that's been good news for the tax cheats, the rich and big corporations, but not for the poor. Welcome to Democracy Now!, Thanks Paul. So, first, talk about uh, making this group of workers essential and bringing them back to serve the mortgage industry. Well, I mean, I think it's important to know this is the second kind of remarkable decision the Trump administration has done to ease the pain of the uh, the shutdown. And the first was, uh, what they originally said was that workers were coming in and they were just going to be processing payments to make sure that revenue is coming to the government, but refunds would not go out at tax time which obviously would result in an enormous amount of pressure on Congress, and people start not getting those refunds they're expecting to get in February. So they made a decision that was different from all previous administrations that dealt with shutdowns, which said that, actually, we're going to bring these workers back um, in, in tax filing season and have them push out refunds. And then this comes along, where pe the, the, you know, the mortgage industry would like to be processing um, loans, and, and because a lot of uh, tax you know, transcripts are required as a way of underwriting the loans, that was stopping. and so. That's where that pressure came to bear, and they just, you know, came up with a new decision. So they're bending rules a lot when it comes to the IRS hmm. um, to change the way it's been dealt with in the past during shutdowns. Hmm. So they bring and they make these workers not only essential, but they are paying these workers. Right. They found money to, I guess, make them uh, happier workers, I guess. I don't and know. And how does this benefit <laughs> the mortgage industry? It makes sure that uh, they can make loans, that they can make money, that, you know, that, that uh, things don't uh, shut down for them, even if it's shut down for most of the federal government. And this was done at the behest of Steve Mnuchin, the Treasury Secretary. Well, the, the, his people were obviously listening to the lobbyists and made things happen. So, talk about your research, looking at the gutting of the IRS. But it doesn't get gutted equally, or at least the effects of it are not equal. Right. So this starts uh, with the Tea Party Congress uh, coming in after the, tw the 2010 uh, midterms, and. You know, there's a lot of strong anti-IRS sentiment uh, on the right, uh, and originally, kind of the focus is Obamacare has just been passed, and the IRS plays a crucial uh, role in implementing Obamacare. So it's seen as kind of a way to get at Obamacare to attack Obamacare by by uh, restraining the IRS budget. That leads to, to, you know, the reason for budget cuts. And then there's a large scandal that erupts in 2013 regarding uh, how the IRS is, uh, in, from the view of people on the right, uh, sorry, targeting uh, right-leaning uh, nonprofit, political nonprofits. This is the lowest learner scandal. And that leads to the justification for other uh, massive uh, cuts. And so starting in 2011 through 2018, uh, the IRS budget is being 
really hacked at in some years and just kind of held down in other years. And the cumulative effect of that is a, a budget cut of over $2 billion uh, in today's dollars over that time. Um, they lost a third of their enforcement staff. Uh, and, you know, taxpayer service has, has suffered, but that has actually been one area where, you know, constituents are angry because they call the IRS, they can't get an answer to questions. And so Republicans have kind of uh, bumped funding a little bit um, in that area. But there's some other basic areas that are, that are you know, in, in a state where they've never been before. Uh, so some people might say, good, um, they shouldn't have the, this kind of resources. You know, there's a whole movement um, that says, obviously, they want the IRS gutted, and then others who say government is absolutely essential. Um, who is more likely to get audited? Well, so I think it's important to note, so uh, one of our largest anti-poverty programs is the Earned Income Tax Credit. Uh, about $70 billion goes out, it goes to 27 million households, and that is run by the IRS. And since the 90s, the right, the Republicans in particular, have put a lot of pressure on the IRS to audit people who receive that, that benefit. It comes in the form of a tax refund each year. Over a third of the audits that the IRS does are of people who receive that credit. And that's a, that's a type of auditing that the IRS does. It's largely automated. And so what we were able to show in our piece is that audits of the rich, audits of corporations have uh, come down much more quickly than audits of people who are receiving this credit. These are people, you know, households that tend to have income under $20,000 a year. Um, it's a program that lists, lifts uh, about, you know, millions of children out of poverty every year. Uh, and, you know, th the computers can still pump out those audit letters. Um, and so that, that area of auditing has fallen much, much less precipitously. So let me go to a graphic from your yeah. article on earned income tax credit recipients. It shows that since 2011, Audit rates for the wealthy have dropped more steeply than for um, for the earned income tax credit recipients. For example, for taxpayers earning between two hundred and five hundred thousand dollars a year, audit rates drop by seventy four percent. But for earned income tax credit recipients who have a median annual income under twenty thousand, audits drop by just thirty six percent. So yeah. you're more likely to be audited if you're making less than twenty or forty thousand dollars a year than if you make a million dollars. Right. So it's kind of what the IRS has said as well. We were prioritizing these people at the bottom, and we're prioritizing people at the very tippy top, which is people who earn over ten million dollars a year. Um, but what that means is that you know audits of the affluent have plummeted far more. So that this there's basically no balance anymore. Where you have you have to get up to a million dollars a year before you see the same uh, audit rates as people um, at the very bottom of the income scale. And so what has happened to people at the top of the income scale? Well, they're not getting audited. So. You know, that's what happens. And corporations. At corporations. I mean, the largest corporations in the country used to be audited every year. That, that's happening less and less. So the Microsofts, the Googles, and all those, um, they might still be audited, but very large corporations uh, are no longer audited everywhere they used to be. And what's going to be the effect of the government shutdown overall on people paying taxes this year? Well, it means to be seen whether the IRS can can somehow make the the filing season work in a way that uh, and get people's uh, refunds out on time. I mean, uh, enormous and tens of millions of people re rely on these refunds being uh, on time. Uh, right now, they are contemplating bringing workers back after not receiving a paycheck for five weeks and coming in to process refunds to make sure that everyone gets their refund on time. That remains to be seen how that that that's going to work out. That's something that has never been done before. Hmm. And what were you most surprised by in this series you did? Uh, well, I would say that some of the most basic things the IRS is not able to do because of this, the funding drop-off. Like, one area is uh, people who do not file any tax return at all. It's kind of hard for the IRS to, to find those people and to tell them, you know, that you owe this money and, and to track them down and make them pay. And so they basically just stop doing it. Uh, so if you don't file taxes, uh, it's, it's, it, so they're not opening those investigations. They're saying, well, we don't have people to do what we need to do, so let's make sure that we're cashing the checks people are sending in. Other things that take more resources to do, that take a lot, a lot of time, we just don't have the people to do that, so we're not going to do it. Mm. Um, I want to thank you very much for being with us. Paul Keel, reporter for ProPublica, where he covers business and the economy, uh, contributor to the recent series headlined Gutting the IRS. Who wins when a crucial agency is defunded? Um, and the subtitle, A Multi-Year Campaign to Slash the IRS Budget, has left it understaffed and on the defensive. That's been good news for tax cheats, the rich, and big corporations, but not for the poor.
And that does it for our program, Democracy Now!, produced by Mike Burke, Dina Geister, Carla Wills, Tammy Warrenoff, Sam Alkoff, John Hamilton, Robbie Karen, Hani Massoud, Trina Nadura, Tay Marie Astudio, and Libby Rainey. Mike DeFlippo, Miguel Nagara, our engineers. Special thanks to Becca Staley, Julie Crosby, Hugh Grant, David Prude, Ariel Boone. And if you want to go to our website at democracynow.org to watch our video, audio, podcasts, read transcripts, I'm Amy Goodman.